What's going on guys, Jamie here back again with another video and today we start on the star screen because I don't want to give away too much. After our 6-0 demolition of Everton, it's all been going rather well. If you have a look at the schedule, there's a lot of green on there. So we followed the 6-0 win up. We got brought back down to earth a little bit quickly. A one all draw away at Southampton. We were one nil up in this game, but... You know, a point at St Mary's, I'm never going to scoff at that. And then followed our home form, just been excellent. A 4-0 demolition of Swansea. Two goals for Gale, two goals for Ritchie. Gale, at the start of the season, has been in fine form. He's dipped off slightly, a little bit, but he's still... I think he's already in double figures, so already he's equaled last season's tally. But yeah, as you can see, an impressive performance. We then beat... Lowly Oldham in the EFL second round. Falchinelli with a goal. Edmondson with an own goal. And a new signing. Miller Balanos. There we go when it loads up. 27 year old Ecuadorian. He's uh, a fairly good ratio for Ecuador. One every three games. We picked him up fairly cheap. Uh, from I think that's Gremio in Brazil. Only 2.4 million. He's come in, he's replaced Riviere, slightly bit better, a bit of an upgrade. And uh, yeah, you'll notice his stats, he's played seven games, he's only scored one goal, a couple of assists, but it's good to have options. Um, so yeah, him, Falcinelli, Gale, Mitrovic, I'm happy with that strike force. He was the only other addition that we made, we brought in a couple of youngsters. But yeah, overall, very happy with the squad. Right, then we go back to the fixtures. Uh, where were we? So we beat Oldham. And then followed that up with a 2-0 win away at Burnley. Did help. They went down to 10 men. Gales had already scored before that. But Jack Colback sealed the win. And then a home draw against Stoke. Didn't want the international break to come, but unfortunately it did. And uh, yeah, Mitrovic puts one is up. But then we did go 2-1 down. And luckily a, a penalty in the last five minutes. Captain John Joe Shelby saving the day for us. So, so a point on our return. And then our first defeat of the season away at Norwich. Now Norwich have really been struggling this season. They got promoted with us, I think, via the playoffs. And we just weren't at the races this day. The uh, Tim Grewell scored, scored an own goal early doors and kind of set the tone. But we did go back into it fairly quickly. And I, I thought we would go on from there and assert our dominance. But he gave away a penalty. Kazuki Honda, you know, playing for Norwich now, fair play. And then Diafra Sacco sealing the win in the second half. So, first de defeat of the season, sorry. A little disappointed, but I was expecting it to come. And eventually it did. Then a 3-0 win away at Brighton. A comfortable win. Falcinelli and Bol Bolanos uh, getting on the score sheet as well as Jack Colback. Bit of rotation, but uh, we're still a strong enough side to see off the championship opposition. And then a massive gain, the Tyneweird derby. And of course, we got the result we wanted. John Joe Shelby did score an own goal early doors in this game. Lazar, of all people, with a header in the area. I don't know what he was doing there, but uh, nonetheless, he got the equaliser. And Gale, he came on to score the winner for us. And yeah, we sent the Newcastle fans home happy. Another big scoreline, a 4-1 win against Leicester. Balanos again getting himself on the school score sheet. Gale getting a couple as well. And then results will start to tail off a little bit. Wolves have been doing quite well actually. They, uh, If you remember back to last season, they snuck into second spot uh, ahead of Huddersfield and Reading. And yeah, again, coming off the back of an international break, we seem, don't seem to do well when we have a couple, a couple of weeks break. So something that maybe we'll have to address in the future. But yeah, Matt Ritchie grabbing a goal. Falcinelli as well, saving us a point. We did the... Usual, went 1-0 up, 2-1 down, and then we save it late doors. John Daddy getting that goal, but I I can't be angry, you know. Now he's at Reading, because there ain't nobody like John Daddy. Uh, Courtney House grabbing a goal for them as well. And then at a point away at Anfield, and to say we FM them, I think is slightly uh, kind to us. I'm going to go with that. They were literally on top of us from start to finish. But Richie scored an outrageous goal, as he always does. And we held on and held on. It was getting longer and longer into the game. And I thought, actually, we might be able to sneak this. But uh, unfortunately not. They were barging on the door for ages and eventually broke it down. Ten minutes left. Philip Coutinho. A ball across the face goal. He was there at a fast stick to tuck it in. And then, disappointingly, we got knocked out of the EFL Cup. 
Not something that I'm too disappointed with, but we did go out to championship opposition on penalties, so that was a little bit disappointing, but a nil-nil draw. Um, it was a fairly strong side I played, actually, so kind of disappointed. But we did follow that up in the Tyne Tees derby. 3-2 uh, when it would look to be going comfortable. All five goals coming in the second half. We were 2-0 up. Middlesbrough are rock bottom of the league at this point. But two goals in two minutes from them. And I did think we might throw it away. But Superman Ra Matt Ritchie grabbing us the winner. He's been so decisive in this these few games this season. So. And that run then has left us in the lofty position of third place. It's all been going rather well. And I'm... I don't want to say that I'm confused and bewildered because I like to think that I have some sort of know-how playing football manager, but I didn't expect us to be doing this well. You see Matt Ritchie there, second in the average ratings. He's been absolutely phenomenal, as I've already said. But yeah, there's already a bit of a gap to Man United and Tottenham, but I'm not expecting us to close that gap. Um, although we are doing well, the, the mission was never to challenge for European places. It was always to get a comfortable finish in the league. The run seems to be going on yet, but I did say in the last episode, we did have a fairly kind run of games, as you will have just seen. We're getting to that point now, around Christmas time, where the hard games are starting to come in. We've got Tottenham today, and then if you have a look, Bournemouth in the next game, and then away at Old Trafford, at home to Arsenal, City, Chelsea. So there's some tough tests coming up, but... Uh, you know, I'm fairly confident. I think we've made a good start to the season. Just go have a good look at it again. You know, level on points with Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, all sort of struggling really. So, you know, I'm really impressed. I'm glad that we're taking advantage in the easier games and picking up as many points as we can. The next month or so might be a little bit tough. Might gener generate a bit of sort of bad uh, morale in the camp. But these lot are a really stern bunch and they're doing really well. So... They should be proud of what they've achieved so far and I'm I'm fairly confident of achieving that finish. Fingers crossed, obviously we don't we don't bottle it. Anyway, enough about that. Um let's get into today's team. So yeah, like I was saying, our first real test this season, um and it's the first time this season that I've actually played a slightly more defensive formation. We've been playing four four two all season. It seems to have served us really well, actually. I don't think teams are expecting us to play the 4-4-2. So, it's gone out of fashion so much. I think teams are a little bit confused when they see it. But it has served us well. But we've seen that Spurs are doing really well this season. So, I want to have that little bit more solidity. So, we're going to drop a, drop a midfielder in. Uh, sacrifice a striker. So, if we have a look then, this is today's team. We've got Tim Krull in goal. A back four of Adam Smith, Grant Hanley, who's really been excellent recently. Coming into the season, he was probably my fourth choice centre-back. But he's had a run of games recently. We had injuries to Lascelles and Kieran Clark. So, Hanley's been getting a get bit of game time. And he hasn't let me down by any means. He'll be partnered by Jamal Lascelles and Len Lazar as well. He's the same sort of situation. Dumb it. Has only really come back from injury fairly recently. So Lazar's been playing and he's been putting in some excellent performances. So I'm not going to take them out just because you would like the first choice uh, players are back. You know, if you're playing well, then you obviously deserve uh, a place in the squad. And if you look at the last five games as well, that back four, all above seven. So they've been playing out their skin recently. Hayden's going to sit in the defensive midfield spot. Just going to have him on the defensive midfield. I'm not really a fan of the ball-winning midfielder. Um, I think it was last season, uh, last season's FM or this season's FM. No, FM 16. Um, had a private save going, obviously with Reading. Uh, operated Danny Williams in that ball-winning midfield spot, and he was just red cards of fun. 20, 20 yellow cards a season, guaranteed. And it just seems a bit overkill. So I don't really operate a ball-winning midfielder, but I think we've got, you know, technically good enough players to get away with playing that. Obviously, today we'll see about that. In the middle, we've got John Joe Shelby and Jack Colback. The army has had a fair bit of injury problems recently, but he ha when he has been playing, he's played well. And then on the right, we've got Superman. Um, 7.98 in his last five games. been fantastic. So we've got him as an inside forward, so he can cut inside onto that wand of a left foot. Rolando Ahrens, again, another one who's just come back from injury. He's been playing well recently, so he's been keeping Robbie Brady out of the team. 
And then Dwight Gale up front. Like I said, he's gone off the boil a bit recently, but he has come back into form. So I'm going to operate him as my advance forward in this game. So let's get stuck into our first test. So if we have a look at the Spurs team then, uh, Harry Kane up top, he's taken the number nine shirt. Baldo Kieto on the left, Luan on the right. That's two very good players that they brought in. Team is very much the same other than that. Uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, they've got Davy Klassen on the bench as well. Let's have a quick look at the uh, transfer business that they've done. I'm always quite interested to see when it gets beyond the first season, what sort of uh, business other teams are doing. So, yeah. We've got Keita Bialde. I said that terribly. Bialde Keita. I'm going to go with that. It's so much easier. 17 million. Rising to 23. That's a fairly good price. And they've Davy Klassen for just over 10 million. But that's got a few future fees. And then Francisco Trincao from Braga. Le young left wing. Oh, look at that potential up there. And he's got some good stats already for a 17-year-old. So he's going to be a world beater, I'm sure, one day. And you know, whilst Fazio's gone, I think that's already in the game. Ben Taleb's definitely already uh, scheduled when you start at Spurs. And G's gone out. Vincent Janssen on loads of Leverkusen. That's quite a big move, actually. Marcus Edwards, a fairly hot-rated youngster, has gone out on loan to Cardiff. So, I just want to look, who did they bring in first? So, they brought in Luan in the first season. They got Berardi as well. So, they haven't really got rid of anyone, but they've only strengthened. Luan is, in last season's uh, Kerbs Milan mission, when he signed Luan, he was a proper top-quality player. So, I certainly know what he can do. And, uh, speaking of Kev, actually, I want to do a big shout-out to... Uh, Kevin Loki for the content creator day on Saturday and hosting it. I went along, um, got there just about in time for the Q and A, and it was a it was a really good day. Um, you know, thanks to the MVA as well for hosting it. If you haven't been there before, you should definitely check it out. I was quite surprised at actually how many things were playable, as Loki's been saying in his videos. Um, hit the nail on the head, really. Yeah, as I was saying. The MVA is a really great place. I was expecting a lot of it just to be like old consoles in cases that you can see. But actually all the old, you know, stuff like Commodores, Spectrums, NES, they all, they had them all operating and playable. And it was just, it was so much fun. They even had like more recent uh, consoles like Xbox 360, PS4s. They had all that hooked up and it was, it was a good day and a really good laugh. I went with a mate and, um. Yeah, we had so much fun. And yeah, just big thanks to Loki and Kev for organising it. And the meal afterwards was really great. Um, getting to meet, actually sit down properly and get chatting with everyone. Um, it was good to chat to people when we were at the MVA anyway. <laughs> if you've seen the videos, you'd know. It was just uh, playing big Jenga outside in the decking area. And that was a good laugh, if you haven't already watched that. But um, as Luan scores while I'm babbling, you know, if you always, that's what always happens when you pick out an opposition player. Oh, I'm still logged into Xbox. Oh no. When you, sorry if you didn't see that, that would mean nothing to you. I just got an Xbox party chat uh, notification pop up. But um, no, yeah, I'll, um, if you, I'll put the links to uh, the videos, the vlogs um, that Loki and Kev did. And um, yeah, so. It was a really good day. I think Kevin Loki did a Q&A as well. It went for about an hour and a half, just maybe. As we go 2 near down, right, this is a disaster. I'm going to move it up to control. Um, yeah, I'll put the links to all the videos in the description as well. But, um, yeah, it was a really good day. Met some really good people. Now Jack Colback's injured. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, I've had a look through the positions, and Robbie Brady is the only player that can slightly play in the centre of the park. So... I'm just going to slot him in there. It's going to have to do. But yeah. Uh, some of the some of the creators that were there. You had people like. Uh, who was there? Dave as a party. Kurt FM, One True Nerd. And then. They're all. You know. They've all got fairly. Fairly high subscriber counts. But then you've got. The lower. The people with the lower. Uh, subscriber counts. That were there. Ready to enjoy the day. To meet. You know. Essentially they're heroes. So. It's people that we all look up to. That make you know that we aspire to be like in the community so you know you got uh people like old man suda um bad jokes fm you know go and check out all their channels because actually although the subscriber count may not be good some of the content is actually really good so 
you know, I'm sorry if anyone's watching this and that's scrambled in for 3-0, excellent. Um, I'm sorry if there's anyone watching this that came that I haven't shouted out. Um, you know, there was just, yeah, it was a great day. It was a long day as well. It was a three-hour drive for me to get there. So, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. So hopefully we can do something like that again in the future because it would be great to meet more people that are involved or even just people that, you know, don't necessarily create but just like watching FM content. Come on, Aaron. Orlando, but yeah, this get, I've been babbling on for this whole game, and it's gone absolutely terribly. Um, I'm not going to make a sub just yet, actually. I forgot that we brought Brady on, but um, I think we just got to go for it now. Going to push it up to attacking. You can see, you know, the gap already between us and us Spurs and United. The golfing class is already telling in this game, so we haven't suffered a defeat quite like this. Um, in the so far this season but then again like i said we haven't uh we haven't been playing any of the really big teams so if this is a sign of things to come and how the run of form is going to go um in the next few games then uh i definitely need to sort of prepare this team maybe go back to the 442 maybe it's the uh defensive system that isn't really working for us but anyway i'm going to take Lazar off he's picked up a knock and he's not even having a great game so I know we should be making attacking changes, but you know, I think this game, I think this game is done, and we need to save Lazar because he's been a really good player for us. Uh, Richie's had an, I don't want to go on the stats. Richie's had a, a <clears throat> unusually, so uh, unusually bad game for him. So uh, I'm going to move this, just move it up to Ola Road. You know, to say damage limitation, but we've got to try and save face at the very least. So. Even if we can get a goal, bring Roberts on, leave him as an inside forward so he can cut in on his left foot as well. But that looks like it's going to be about that as Larice they get a free kick deep in the half with just just under a minute left. But yeah, a definite learning curve this game. I think we've we've shown that uh, against the tougher teams we might not quite be up to scratch. So it just you know it makes it it highlights the point that we need to do need to take as many points as we can off the lower teams it's as simple as that so as they come for, please don't grab a fourth uh luan kane oh it's grabbed a fourth excellent i think that's kane's 18th goal of the season already that's mental as we kick off then and you look at the stats they've completely dominated us in this game we can't have any complaints disappointing to say the least absolute drubbing been on the first time we've received one of these we normally dish them out but it just wasn't to be we're gonna get aggressive it's far from pleased with that so i mean uh, did arsenal lose they played the same amount of games as us i'm not too sure burley with a big win over there uh oh palace taking a point off united as well so we're still in third place i mean that could i doubt southampton's going to overtake us so uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to stay third for now, but we're not going to stay there for long if we keep performing like that. If we just have a look at the schedule, oh, another international break coming, so definitely whoever we've got next, we're only going to take a point off. Oh, and Jack Colback's out for six to eight weeks. That's bloody brilliant. Right, let's have a look at the schedule. Um, I think we'll come back. Um, let's go for, I'm going to do the Southampton game. I fancy doing another transfer special because that went down really well last time. So, um, there's a few games in January as per, not many sort of exciting ones. So, um, we might come back. I might show you the, uh, the second time we're derby of the season. I'll have a look. But, um, no, yeah, I think we'll come back for the Southampton game. We'll start off at the start of the transfer window and then the episode after that we can do a, uh, do a transfer special so then guys if you have enjoyed today's episode i really hope you haven't because of the result but i hope you have because you enjoy the content but anyway if you have drop a like on there for me subscribe to the channel if you're new i just want to say as well a massive thank you for all the new subscribers we've had over the past few days i think maybe to do with all the exposure we're getting from the uh creator day i know the likes of like i said kevin loki in their videos they put the links to everyone's channel in their descriptions of their videos so maybe that's had a massive help but uh yeah thank you to anyone that has subscribed recently i really appreciate it i really hope you enjoy the content and uh yeah i'll see you guys next time